Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold with Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter here at Second Swing. We're at the Minneapolis Tour Van location, and today we're going to look a little bit at driver loft. We've got three Callaway Epic Flash drivers. We're going to test three different lofts at 9 degrees, 10.5 degrees, and 12 degrees. Thomas is going to do some swinging for us. He might get a little bit tired. There's going to be a lot of swings for you. But uh, we're going to look and see the differences between loft and how that affects launch, spin, distance, really any TrackMan data uh, point that you can look at. So, Thomas, before we get into it, you know, what do you think, just based on, you know, uh, initial thoughts, what do you think you will see uh, in this test? You know, one thing I will probably expect to, to happen is launch and spin is going to be higher with the higher lofted yeah. drivers, lower with the lower lofted mm -hmm. drivers. I'm going to maybe expect that because the launch and spin is going to be a little lower, I'm probably going to hit it further with the lower lofted drivers. Yeah. However, I'm curious to see what happens to the dispersion and also the flight pattern, whether I'm able to shape the ball right to left or left to right, or if I have a hard time shaping a certain, certain direction. One thing to also keep in mind too, you know, I'm gonna hit probably 20, 25 drivers here today in a driver fitting. We always try to limit it to maybe 35, 40 at the absolute yeah. max, because fatigue definitely yeah. can be a factor. So I'm gonna get a little fatigued here at, at the <laughs> end, even by hitting 20 shots in a row with a driver. I'm going to be feeling it. So yeah. it's very, very important to kind of pay attention to yeah. that as well. Which is also why we're, I mean, we're going to mix it up kind of. We're not just going to hit all the 9 degree, all the 12 degree, all the 10 and a half degree. You know, we're going to mix it up too to give that, make this an, as objective of a test as possible. And then we'll come back, look at the numbers, and uh, provide some insight for you. One felt pretty good. Yeah. That felt solid too. Interesting that that was obviously significantly shorter but yeah. significantly further left as well. I've got my club speed to get up a little bit. I mean, working, working hard at getting yeah, my club speed go. up a little bit higher. All right, so we come back, hit a couple more with each one just so we can uh, Make sure there's no outliers. Yeah, why don't we do like two or three more with each one? Maybe do three more with each one. Right. Switch to 12 or? No, we'll go 12. Nine degrees or 12. Getting tired yet? Never. <laughs> Just getting warmed up. Good one too. That's right in the middle. That was crushed. All right, you got eight of those now. Yep. Crushing it. Okay, so we took out one outlier per per club here. We hit what eight shots with each, so we've got yep. seven shots per per club listed here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down so we can take a look at all the averages overall. If we take a look at the first column, we will notice the club speed. Notice the club speed with all in there at one one thirteen. So data's not skewed at all. What's interesting is the twelve degree loft driver was actually my fastest club speed out of the ball, mm -hmm. 113.8. Um, but if we slide one column over to the right, even though the club speed was the fastest, the ball speed was the slowest with the 12 degree uh, hit. So typically what I see is the fastest way to increase ball speed is to decrease loft. 
but we obviously want to get make sure the customer can get the ball right. up in the air as well. So yeah. I mean, we want to spin it too low at the same time there as well. Um, so really interesting club speed, all identical. So this is a pretty fair test. Um, if we look the nine degree driver, ball speed one one sixty nine. 10.5, 167, 12, 165, 166. So it's exactly what I would have expected to yeah. kind of happen um, with regards to testing. Because the ball speed number was higher with the nine degree driver, the smash factor is gonna be higher because my club speed was the same with all of them. Mm -hmm. 12 degree driver, smash factor was the lowest. I mean, this is all very good. 1.46 to 1.49 is yeah. pretty solid across the board. Um, tour average is 1.49 with the driver, so it's about I'm being pretty efficient with that nine degree driver there. As you may expect, when you have more loft on a driver, the launch angle is probably going to be a little higher. So 12 degree, yep, 15.1 degrees of of uh, launch there. Um, what's interesting is with the nine and the 10.5, it's pretty similar. So 12.7, 12.9. Yes, I did launch it just slightly lower with the nine degree, but the 10.5 wasn't that much yeah. higher. So that's always interesting there to note. Um, it's also interesting to note that the um, spin too is pretty similar. Yeah, spin Nine exactly. And ten and a half. Spin was very very similar. Um, you know, both exceptionally good spin numbers, and that's why the ten point five degree driver was keeping up. Yeah, pretty pretty close to that nine degree driver across the board there too. You know, the nine degree driver did spin what seventy RPMs less. Yeah. So not too much of a difference, minimal but difference there was there. minimal difference, but you know, there was, it did spin a little bit less yeah. like I would expect there the too. The peak height too is actually the same average wise. Yeah, um, 108 feet in the air. Both of them were 108 feet in the air, landing angle 37.4, 37.5. Um, you did jump to the peak height, so I obviously want to touch on the peak height of the yeah. 12 degree driver, 50 degrees. So that essentially is like coming into the green with a eight, nine pitching wedge. Right, yeah. yeah, I mean, you're that 12, if you get the peak height in the 12 degrees, you got 156 feet, which is, you know, an extra 50 feet in the air. Yep. And then that landing, you're going to be able to stick that next to the pin if you wanted to. <laughs> you know, if you wanted to put in two drivers in your yeah. bag, you'd have one, like, you have a nine degree, you have a yeah. 12 degree for it to attack those 280 yard par four. <laughs> it would be a perfect 280 <laughs> yard club right there. Uh, what's interesting, you know, the carry to total distance, 273 to 285, so 12 yards of rollout. Yeah. The nine and 10.5 degree drivers, they rolled out you know, almost 30 yards. Right. So 28 yards That's is true. essentially the difference between mm -hmm. what's right there. Um, carry distance with the nine degree driver was the highest. That's always exciting. The fact that I, I'm very efficient with my swing, so I could reduce the loft as much as I want and keep that carry distance up. One, you know, one issue we do sometimes come across is needing loft on the driver to get that carry distance up. Sure. You know, Minnesota especially, if you like it, this summer it rained a lot. Yeah. You want to make sure you carry that bunker, you make sure you want to get that ball to carry far because yeah. the ball is probably not going to roll out 30 yards um, in soft conditions. So that's why carry distance is important. Uh, what's interesting, 12 degree driver was about 17 to, you know, 9 to 17 yards difference between the carry distance and I've got, I know I've got a total distance here. I just want to switch it to carry distance. I do that and notice how they get closer together. Yep. So the 12 degree was not carrying as far, but it was closer. Obviously, if I switch it to total distance, you can see That's there's a little the, bit the more of The difference in that rollout. In the rollout is right pretty there. Pretty visible yep. there. Yeah. Um, one thing I find really interesting here, and you know, I'm glad we can, we can show this, attack angle. So with the nine degree driver, notice my attack angle was 3.1 degrees yep. up, which is good, which is re really, really, really good. You want to hit up on the ball to maximize your distance. The 12 degree driver, no, I'm not trying to skew the data, so the 12 degree driver only hit up 2.8 degrees. Yeah. So I essentially didn't hit up on it quite as much, right. but it obviously the loft caused that ball to launch and, and spin, and that's just physics kind of doing its job. Yep. You know, so I'm not really trying to manipulate anything at all. Sure. This is just a pure example of what happens when we change the loft around on, on drivers. Um, what also is interesting before we take a look at the dispersion is the face angle on the driver. The 12 degree driver, Notice how I was able to close the club face yep. 1.9 degrees. So I was able to close it two degrees. That helped me to hit that ball to the left. Notice the nine degree and the 10.5, my face was slightly open. So it's a little bit harder for me yeah. to get that club face to release over when I've got less loft. So on the is that 
uh, you know, closing the club face a little bit easier with that 12 degree. Is it due to the loft being increased or is it more of a uh, like a psychological thing looking down, you got more loft? Definitely to do with the loft. Yeah. You know, when I set that 12 degree driver down, it looks like it's pointed a little bit to the left of me. Yeah. It just looks like it's maybe playing a little bit more upright. Um, it just looks like it's going to have a little more loft, make, yeah. making it kind of a little more draw okay. bias, essentially. I wasn't trying to essentially change anything up at all. I was just swinging normal. Um, if we look at the dispersion, we we'll notice I had one dot here with the 12 degree driver that was right of center. And notice yeah. it was basically dead straight. Yeah. Everything else was left. With the 9 and 10.5 degree drivers, we switched that around. I have one dot that is left of the line yeah. with, with each one. So that's very, very important to take a look at. Obviously, if a player is trying to get the ball to shape right to left and they've only got 8, 9 degrees of loft on that driver, yeah. it's going to be more challenging. Yeah. So loft is a lot easier. Yeah. A lot of tour players will talk about... When they're on the tee, they may play a three wood if they've got a dog leg right to left or they're trying to shape it, sure. draw it off the tee as opposed to hitting driver because a driver is much harder to shape right to left. Obviously, we can see the 10.5 and 9 degrees drivers went further. The 9 yeah. degree driver went the furthest, going 318 yards. I'm really, really happy with that. <laughs> really happy with that today. Um, the 10.5 was going 312 yards, so it was six yards less and the 12 degree driver was going 285 yeah. yards. We kind of knew going in that uh, 12 degrees probably isn't going to work for someone with your speed, but I think it's interesting that with a 10.5 and, and 9 degree that you were, I mean, the results were relatively similar, but you did have an extra six yards of distance uh, with the 9 degree, and that's just de-lofting the club a little bit. And then, obviously, it depends on what the golfer is looking for. If they want, maybe a little bit more right-to-left ball flight. Maybe they just need to increase that loft a little bit. Um, or if you're straight up looking for distance, you know, it might, for you, having a lower loft helps that. But sometimes, like you mentioned, with some golfers, they need a little bit more help getting the ball into the air, which a higher lofted club will do for them. Exactly, yeah. So it's finding the right, you know, combination of distance and direction. Yeah. End of the day, if you're hitting it far but not keeping it in the, in the fairway, chip it out sideways is no fun. Yeah. So if you, can sac if you do sacrifice, say, 10 yards and you're in the fairway, say 30, 40% more of the time, I think I know what route I, I would probably want to yeah. go with. And at the end of the day, I know a lot of us golfers, we have egos to try and hit as far as we possibly right. can. But I'd much rather hit 10 to 12 fairways around as opposed to only hitting six or seven. Right. So kind of a big to big difference there. Um, yeah, it's absolutely very, very important to, to make sure you get the right loft on your driver. Um, but you can obviously see the, see the differences in, in right. distance gains and, and losses. We can see the yeah, difference. Absolutely. Well, Thomas, this was some great information. Golfers out there, um, if you're interested in finding out, you know, which loft on your driver is, is best for you, I'd talk to a second swing master fitter such as Thomas, uh, stop in one of our stores, or you can call one of our certified fitters online, and uh, we'll give you the information you need to figure out which driver loft is best for you. Thanks again, Thomas, for your insight today. Yeah, that was a lot of fun.